the greatest show in fantasy football history, hosted by the incomparable Scott Connor and the one and only Ray GQ. I present to you Destination Chill, where football and fantasy collide. G E G P, welcome in, everybody. It is Sunday, March 17th, 2024. Y'all decided to tap into me and my dog, Scott Connor. You can find him at Charles Chill, FFB. Y'all know where to get at me at Ray GQ. But Destination Chill, baby, we've just had a crazy, crazy week of NFL free agency. A lot of stuff is happening in the NFL, and I know y'all are going to hear about all of that stuff this week. It's going to be all over the airways. No matter who you listen to, it's going to be Derrick Henry in Baltimore, Hollywood and KC. And Scott, I'm just going to ask you to just hit us with one thing, just one takeaway, because I'm sure you'll talk about it multiple times this week, as will Jay Rich and I tomorrow on Wake Up. But as people come in, because we're not going to spend a lot of time on this tonight, but just one sweeping takeaway about everything that's happened and transpired with Justin Fields before we get into the show. Wow, you started this off with a banger, Ray. One of the most popular topics, maybe the most popular topic in Dynasty and NFL space over the last week. Free agency was great. Some of the trades were great. Uh, but Justin Fields, it has just caused so much consternation in this space. Uh, so we're not here to talk about that because we could literally do a five-hour episode just talking through where he started through the hopium, through literally the ADV was created on draft night with Justin Fields and still exists today. I'll just say this. The NFL spoke. Sounds like multiple teams were interested. He ended up getting traded for a sixth rounder. I understand why the Bears had to move him. The psychology of having to move him prior to basically changing over the guard in Chicago with the new QB. I think he was priced correctly. Based on, if you just look at objective data, he's probably priced correctly. It's the fantasy community that was like, this guy's just been a victim of everything but his own results. So I hope he does well, honestly. I'm a Bengals fan, but honestly, I want to see a guy like that rebound, get better, get another chance. He's going to get a shot at some point, but I don't think where we stand was wrong. And I also think the Steelers are smart. They did something that we've never seen a team do. They had a first-round quarterback, Ray in their quarterback room, and they basically overhauled that by bringing in Russell Wilson, who's won a Super Bowl, and Justin Fields, who brings a whole new dynamic to what they haven't had in forever. And they did it within a span of like 84 hours. That's impressive. Realizing that that is the one thing that was holding the Steelers back was, man, they have everything else in place, right? The culture, the coach, the defense, but this damn quarterback, they couldn't figure it out. So at least for their fans and for just game theory of, man, is there one thing holding us back? At least they're taking two live shots now to try to fix it. So good for them. It'll be one of the most fascinating situations to see how it plays out. Um, I don't think they pick up his fifth-year option because they paid a sixth-rounder for him. They have no incentive to play Justin Fields more than the number of snaps that would keep their draft pick at a sixth, and then we'll see what happens next offseason where if they let him go in free agency, guess what they get, Ray? A sixth-round pick based on letting him walk. So there's no risk for the Steelers, right? It's all reward. Maybe they hit lightning in a bottle, but if they don't, they have a good backup for 2024. So we'll see how it plays out, but that's it. And I'll save all comments for Justin Fields for the Wake Up with Ray G show tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. Central Standard Time, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. But I do want to uh, announce some fun things, Scott. Before we get into the rookie mock, we're going to go through – a Superflex PPR 1.5 tight end premium mock. It's the first one Scott and I have done. This is since the combine. But I wanted to announce some pretty fun things and show some cool giveaway items that we have coming. So for those of y'all who don't know, this year will be our third year doing a live Destination Debbie draft stream. We will be live streaming the NFL draft night one, day two, and all of day three. Everything from start to finish. And Y'all know how it is in the fantasy space, man. We got to try to pay the bills some way, some shape, somehow, some form. And we have partnered again with Underdog Fantasy this year. You see it right here on the screen. Underdog Fantasy and DD. We're doing a dope thing this year. We are all in with Underdog Fantasy. Myself, along with Scott, will be doing streams 
pretty much from now and two out throughout the entire summer. BBM five underdog best ball drafts. Jay Rich and I will be doing an underdog pick 'em show on this channel, and they are going to be the proud sponsors of our draft stream. So I just want to share a couple little items, right? So with this partnership, all you have to do to register to be in the stream, to be in the entry for the giveaways, is go to Underdog Fantasy, use code DDD, Destination Debbie Draft. DDD, you get not one, but two automatic entries into the following giveaways. This is the first time I'm showing this off. These are some of the things that we're giving away on that draft stream. All you got to do is use code DDD, you're automatically entered. We got Travis Hunter right here. One of these cards. Y'all like trading cards. A little Travis Hunter. Got something else. Got something else for you. We got this, Scott. Lamar Jackson, signed, autographed by Lamar. Puka Nakua, signed, autographed by Puka Nakua. Bijan Robinson, the RB1, signed, autographed, Bijan. Little College, Blake Horm, signed, autographed, Blake. Everybody likes tight ends, so we got Sam Laporta right there giving that away. I still like tight ends. We got Trey McBeast, Trey McBride giving that away. We'll go to the Chiefs. We got Rasheed Rice signed by Rasheed giving that away. And just a throwback because I'm in Texas and I like college football, Johnny Football. We're giving away a sign, Johnny Manziel. The only way you get in, all you got to do, underdog fantasy, D, 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 you get two entries into the contest. And the only exclusions, if you live overseas or in Canada, I'm not paying for the shipping. If you win, I'll give you the opportunity to do it. If not, we'll hook you up with something dope. But we're excited about this partnership, all the dope stuff that we have coming with Underdog Fantasy, DDD, get in, they match you money, free money, free entry into the contest, and a whole bunch of other stuff. But Scott, rookie mock, baby. You ready to get into it? You ready to do it? Let's do it. Let's do it, Kyle. Yeah, Let's go. I, I just gotta say, earlier, earlier you were like, "Man, I got." Some, you were showing me a couple of those items before the stream. Yeah. And earlier you were like, "Man, I got some more stuff in my truck." And I mean, holy hell, you did have more in your truck. Yes. You got a whole yes. a whole roster worth of jerseys to give away, and that's just yes. the jerseys. That's just There's gonna jerseys. be other stuff. It's not just the yes. jerseys. But damn, you got a whole you got a whole fantasy team of jerseys to give. We got good stuff, man. We got good stuff. DDD, get in. But we're going right here, Scott. Super flex. And let's kind of go quickly through these because I would love to get through four rounds if we can, all right? I would love to get through four rounds of this. Super flex PPR, 1.5 tight end premium. Let's talk through how we think the first, second, third, fourth round, however many we get to, should look like. And I'm going to make sure the comments are up so I can see what's going down. But how should this thing look, all right? Super flex, let's just assume we're going 12-team. 10-team changes it. We'll talk about this later on. And, and, and before we start, we're going to do a different format every week. Like every week we're going to do this Sunday night, and it's going to be a different format. Next week it could be just single quarterback, two tight end, start two tight end, 2.0 tight end premium. We're going to do every different format leading up to the draft Sunday night. So get excited for this. So right here. Pretty standard stuff. Super flex PPR 1.5 tight end premium 12 team. Scott, what should the first? I'm going to give you the 101, 102, 103. How should these three picks look in a format like this? Yeah, well, we're talking lineup leagues here, and we're going yes. pretty much as basic as you would get if you went over to Sleeper, set up a league, you hit start new dynasty league, and this is going to be basically the default. Probably. Start 10, your typical three receiver. Don't change any of the scoring. We're not adding any bonuses. We're not adding any point per carry. It's just what would most people set up and start? Small tight end premium, nothing else fancy. We're not going anything yes. extreme. Let's assume 10 starters, average number of roster spots, 25, something like that. So nothing extreme. Like This no. should be to the widest audience possible. If you're just saying, let's start a super flex dynasty league, this is probably where most people are going to start. So with that, all right, a give couple us things the damn picks, Scott. No, okay, this is important. It's important to set up the differences between these formats, or if you're in best ball, if you're in a deeper format, you know, run the war, go to destinationdebbie.com, run the war tool, look at the positional advantages, look at the graphs, look at the league analytics. But I'm just going to start with this. I think we've seen it over the last 
six to 12 months. Last season really nailed this for people. Uh, I think people are starting to devalue the quarterbacks in Superflex a little bit, and I'll explain Ooh. more what I mean by that, Ray. Unless you've proven to be an elite quarterback, everyone else is kind of willing to fade the quarterbacks over more fungible or more valuable assets. So if you're telling me, you're giving me the first three picks, right? You said, Scott, take the first three. Yes. You've am got I, am I right one, with that? Or two, two, three. Three right. of them. We're waiting on three. All right. One or two. I think they're very interchangeable. I just made a trade this week. Traded the 102 for the 101. Or traded the 101 for the 102. Did both. And really, it was about need-based for both teams. So I think it's Marvin... Caleb, Caleb, Marvin, whatever order you want to put them, I think they're very similar. I think Caleb sits in a category of his own. He's very insulated. He's going to a good situation from what we can see. So those are clear one, two. 103, here's where I'm going to stray. Uh, if there's a player, and I, I don't want to get people all up in a tizzy, but this pick might. Diving a little more into this data, Ray, I'm a little concerned about Jaden Daniels. He's got more of the Justin Fields to him than he does the Anthony you're going, Richardson. You're, 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 you're looking at that sack data, aren't you? I'm, I'm, I'm looking I'm not at just, I, I, no, I, I, I think, yes, yes. And part of it is, there's that. Part of it is how highly valued Malik Neighbors is going to be based on where his okay. draft capital is. Okay. He could go in the top five. But okay. I also think, I like Jaden Daniels. We both were higher on him during the season than most. So I'm not out on him, but I think there's going to be a sector of the community that sees. I just got an anonymous message earlier after our discussion. Yeah, the clock last is night. ticking legitimately. How do you turn this off? Sound? There we go. All right, sorry. It was, it was, I mean, I'm I waiting get it. for you to I make the damn I, pick. I mean, I'm waiting I, on who it is. You I see get, where I'm going. I see. But I'm get gonna, there. I'm going to ride, I'm going to ride with that sentiment of these quarterbacks being a little riskier than normal we're going to league neighbors 103 you are up i like it i like it finally you get to talk go i, I mean shit i like what you had to say man I, I i kind of agree with you that i think people i've seen a lot of data out there with the sacks and you know i like me some Jaden daniels but i am starting to get a little nervous and i just think that i mean Neighbors is going to get the benefit of the doubt a lot longer than I think the quarterback will. So I don't mind that pick at all, Scott. I do think I agree with you, man. I think the first two picks in Superflex should be like inside that first three, Neighbors and Harrison should be off the board. Like I really do. I really do, man. Uh, but here at 104, it is Superflex. I am going to go with Jaden Daniels uh, right here is the QB2. Um, I still like Daniels quite a bit. Where, where is he at? Where, where is he? Daniels, D-A-N. Jaden Daniels, there we go. He's coming off the board 104 for me. I still like him as QB2. I would also rather have neighbors over him right now. And then at the 105 spot, you know, for me, man, I don't, I don't personally see all of the negative that's around this quarterback. And exactly where I have Jaden Daniels, I could honestly just inverse and flip-flop these two. I'm going Drake May here at the 105 spot. I, again, if Daniels falls in a spot that I hate and Dre falls, Drake May falls in a spot that I love, I've got no allegiance to Jaden Daniels over Drake May, depending on their landing spot. So I think for me, I still think those two should come off of the board right there. But you can also make an argument for Roma Dunze going off the board for any of those guys and people just feeling safe. I mean, you're seeing big name analysts say they've never felt safer about a prospect hitting and not being a bust as they do Roma Dunze, right? That this guy just, he's bust proof. So we can make the case and the argument that Rome should go ahead of both these quarterbacks. But for me, them three that you pick, Jaden May, Odunze, pretty chalk shit, one through six. Yeah, and I think if you have picks four through six, and if you have picks three through even eight, a lot of what I've seen is those are very much in the hands of people that are examining what their needs are. Yeah. If I have pick four, if I have pick five, if I have pick six, and I don't have a glaring need, guess what I'm not doing, Ray? I am not trading up a spot to just pick my preference. Now, maybe that changes. After the draft, we're going to see people steam certain guys up, so other players are going to fall. 
But if I'm sitting in those ranges right now and someone offers me a deal where I have to give up an extra piece to go from 105 to 104, I'm good. I don't have the yeah, incentive. I'm if Sorry. I'm in dire need of, man, if I have four top quarterbacks and what I don't want is to get stuck with the QB, maybe I'll consider moving or vice versa. Yeah. But if I'm in a spot where I really just don't care, there's just not a lot of incentive to move within these picks. So I think this is where the draft starts, don't you think? Yes. Agreed. Agreed. Or you think we expand it maybe a couple more picks? What Honestly, you think? nah, man. I think this is where it starts. You can have these six ranked in whatever order you want, but I think for the most part, these this should be the top six, in, in my opinion, right? We'll see how things play out with McCarthy or Brock Bowers, but I think for the most part, this should be your top six. So let's get it. Let's let's go. Let's let's heat it up. Let's pick it up a little bit. Let's wrap it up. Let's go. All right, so what's our cadence? We going one and one? We just going snake from here on out? Yeah, let's back go one and for forth. One. Let's go back and forth. Let's do it. I like that. All right. All right, 107, I am going to take J.J. McCarthy over Brock Bowers with the caveat, if your tight end room sucks and you are chasing a positional advantage, I have no problem taking Brock Bowers. If you're like, man, I'm rolling with Kate Otten as my number one and I'm trying to hit a hammer, I'm fine taking Bowers. What I'm not doing is if I have Sam Laporta, I'm not just drafting Brock Bowers. I would rather go see what I can do with the pick, or I'd rather take a QB, or I'd rather trade the pick. So that's the caveat. We don't have a team here. Pure value or what yes. I would do without knowing any of that context. I'm going. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you 100%. Can you still hear me, Scott? It looked like you went out a little bit at the end. You still there? I'm just making sure before I go. No, we're good. All right, cool. We good. All right, for me, 108, this is a 1.5 tight end premium. Although I don't value that as a strict premium, I think the value that Brock Bowers is going to have coming in versus the uncertainty of how the community feels about Brian Thomas Jr., he's, he's actually fallen down mocks post-combine for whatever reason. I don't know how that's even possible, but he's gone. He's fallen uh, consensus mock stuff. So... I'm looking at value security, ADV, and just for most people that do value tight end premium, I mean, we're seeing it all through FFPC, Scott. I'd take Brock Bowers here at the 108. Yep, can't argue. Um, I think you hit the pick at 109. By default, it's Brian Thomas Jr. at wide receiver four. Listen, that could change. There's a lot of receivers that are going to go probably outside the top 15 and inside the top 40, where you may prefer one over the other. I see the latest mock I was looking at had Brian Thomas going to the Steelers. I don't know about that. That'd be interesting with him and Pickens. I, you know what I mean? That'd be interesting to see how they would deploy that. But for now, he's the clear wide receiver four. So this is an auto pick for me, 109. All right, 110. I believe he'll get the capital. I believe this player is going to have the fanfare to go with it. And, and, I, and I am currently projecting him to go in, on night one. I believe Ladd McConkey will be a day one pick. I think he's going to sneak into the back of the first round, and if not, top of the second. ADV people like him. I'm t and I think he is a. Um, I think he's got. When you look at his profile, I think he's plug and play from day one. I'm not saying he's going to be elite from day one, but I think from day one he'll be on an NFL field, regardless of what roster it is. And when you do have a skill set like his, who he can win inside, and being able to play in the slot is not just a white thing. It's, a, it's an advantage. I think he can see some opportunity quite early. I'm a big fan of Lab McConkie, a fan of his game, and I think the ADV will, will match his capital and his potential production. Interesting. I actually didn't think you would go Lad there. That's not. It's a good pick, but I didn't think you would actually go there. I thought you might go with another receiver, uh, which is mm -hmm. where I'm going to go. You know what? I'm starting to come around, Ray. Some of the old ways I would have evaluated receivers have started to pop back up. Uh, the more and more I look at, you know, what guys like Tank Dell are going for, Devontae Smith are going for, I got to go Xavier Worthy. I think he would clearly be my wide receiver five. Uh, I think he's going to be the wide receiver four or five off the board in the NFL. And he's probably in a spot where a team's drafting him for a very specific reason. Now, it'll be interesting to see if he lands in a non-Kansas City or Buffalo landing spot because that seems to be where everyone mocks him. And it's like, I think Kansas what if he City, doesn't think, go there? I think KC is not going there. With them signing Hollywood now. on a one-year deal, right. they can address cornerback, especially if they trade Snead. I don't think Kansas City's in the play. And the fact that 
The Bills, they brought back Schultz. They just signed. Who did they, who else did they bring in that played the similar role as uh, Curtis Samuel? Should, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. He'll watch him end up in Philadelphia. But go ahead. I, I feel you with X. I feel you with Worthy. No. Well, but here's the thing. We talked about this on previous episodes before free agency. A couple, couple weeks ago, we mentioned when you get to the outside the top 15, 16 picks, there's not a lot of great, sexy landing spots for receivers. And yet we're sitting here going, man, at least three more of these guys outside of the top three are going to go in the first round. And then you look at the spots, and I could go through, and 80% of them, people are going to go, yuck, yuck, I don't like that spot. That's not a great spot for that guy to smash. And that goes back to your perspective of you draft Ladd McConkey, you draft Xavier Worthy, you can't expect 90, 1,008 touchdowns off the rip. You know, Ladd McConkey's not better than Christian Kirk. Xavier Worthy's probably not right. better than Hollywood Brown in right away. So just keep that in perspective. But these guys are going to hold some value, and I think we're starting to take some of the guys people like as well. The likability effect is already in place here with our picks in the first round. All right. So what I think is going to happen here at the 112, I think this is a, this is a pivot point, man. And I'm going to just say this, and I'm just I'm listening – to NFL people talk about these players. And it sure does seem like Bo Nix is the consensus QB5. That's what it feels like, okay? And I keep seeing him in the first round of NFL mocks. I know I'm not a big fan. You're probably not a big fan. But I am just the messenger of what I'm seeing. If Bo Nix is a first-round quarterback, man, like, do you have to take him here at the 112 spot? We could debate that, but I'm going to go another direction, Scott, because I do believe that we will see a running back drafted in round two, and I believe there are a couple of spots where it literally just, it naturally makes organic sense, and you don't even have to squint so hard to see that landing spot of where it could be. The Dallas Cowboys need a running back. They didn't do a damn thing through free agency. They have no running back on the roster, and everybody knows that they need this, need this position. They're going to draft one, and I believe it's going to be in round two. And I think that whomever the running back it is that gets drafted to the Dallas Cowboys in round two, when you're sitting back here at the 112, I think the depth of the wide receiver class, the sort of uncertainty between a Keon Coleman, Adnan Mitchell, Xavier Leggett, Troy Franklin, Roman Wilson, and just the depth of the wide receiver class, I think it will make people say, I'm taking the RB1 in this class who I already kind of like and then he lands in a good spot that I can see a bunch of opportunity. And if I had to guess on who that running back today would be, this is just my guess of whom that running back would be, and people wouldn't have to tell themselves a big story to take him at 112 spot, it would be Florida State running back Trey Benson. The size, the speed, the athleticism is there. He gets drafted to the Dallas Cowboys. I think if you're sitting back here at the 112 and you've got the opportunity to take the RB1 in the class, even if, let's just say, his best case range of outcome is David Montgomery. Just say that. I think people would be fine with that opposed to taking Roman Wilson as the wide receiver four on Indianapolis. The one-year wonder that people think Xavier Leggett could be. I think this would be probably the appropriate range if you were going to take a back that got the capital in the situation, the opportunity, and the profile. Seems like Trey Benson would be the guy to take the bet on. That's round one. What do you think about the Benson pick there, Scott? I know you're not. Hey, I, you know how we both feel, but I'm just playing how I. I'm trying to. I'm trying to tell the story. You dig? Yeah, I think the story's uh, well told because I do think at pick eleven or twelve there is going to be a running back in the Dallas landing spot. I mean, right now they have Snoop Connor, Malik Davis, and Deuce Vaughn. That's the only running backs they have under contract currently. So just forecasting if they take a running back with any appreciable capital there's going to be one that slots into this range i don't know who it is benson quorum jonathan brooks i don't know you don't right. know we don't know the team there's a couple no. others we can mention but probably what i think you're trying to say is there's going to be an rb that people are going to be saying you should take them here 111 112 he's going to sneak into the first round so i agree with the pick whether it's Benson to Dallas or whether it's Brooks somewhere else, it doesn't matter. There's going to be an RB that's threatening to be in the first. So I think it's pretty uh, pretty chalk first round. I think it starts to get interesting here with the positional groups that we take. So I'm ready to go. So let's do this. For rounds two, we'll literally just go pick. We'll say pick. We'll go through the whole second round. 
and then we'll go back through and then talk about what we thought was interesting or whatever. So pick for pick, you're at the top of the second. Again, Superflex, 1.5 tight end premium PPR. Pick for pick. Yeah, pick for pick, there's a little bias here. I think there's some ADV bias. People like this player. They're buying into this player even more after his pro day. So I'm going to go with Troy Franklin, who apparently uh, has no warts now. And I think he's uh, one that a lot of people like better than some of the other receivers on the board. So for me. All right. At the 2-2 spot, I'm going to go Adnan Mitchell, wide receiver and big riser out of Texas after the combine. Adnan Mitchell, who I think will be a first-round pick. 203. So this is where, kind of like Ray's 112, this is where the QB5 comes off the board. I don't know who it is. If I had to pick, I'm going to go with Bo Nix. Could be Michael Penix. There's a world. It could be Spencer Rattler. But there's going to be a QB. Right now, there's six teams in the NFL, the Bears, the Broncos, the Vikings, the Patriots, the Giants, and the Commanders, I think are all candidates to draft the quarterback in the first two rounds. One of them is going to pull the trigger, whether that's trading into the first or picking one in the second. There's going to be one. And I think both Knicks and Penix have enough name and enough buzz. They land in one of those spots. It's going to be that's the starter. They're going to vault into starter range for super flex value, and there's going to be people going, ah, man, there's so many receivers in this draft. Give me the QB. All right. Here at the 2-4 spot, I'm going back to the running back well, and I'm going to take – Blake Corum out of Michigan, all around back. Again, I think he's going to get day two capital. Blake Corum off the board at 2-4. Whew. You know what? I'm going to follow you. I do think there's going to be another running back. I've talked about it before. I'm going to go Jonathan Brooks. I think if he's there, regardless of where he lands, I think he's kind of going to get a pass for this year. So I think he's good value ADV-wise here. So Jonathan Brooks, 205. All right, at the 206 spot, again, wide receiver so deep. There's a, a few of them that I want to take, but I kind of want to push you to, to be the one to pop the seal on that. If Nix is off the board at 2-3, I honestly don't think this player would come off of the board much later in the NFL draft. And honestly, I think more people in the fantasy community like Michael Penix more than they do Bo Nix. I think with similar capital, I have a much better chance of trading my Penix than you would your Bo Nix just based off of ADV. So I'm taking Penix at the 2-6. Yep, can't argue. Uh, I'm going to go back to the receiver well. This is, to me, this kind of feels like a little bit of a tear break where if you're attacking receiver here, you're kind of yep. going like, man, there's a lot of them that I want. Yep. How can I get three of them instead of having to pick yep. one? So this is definitely yep. a spot where, you know, if you're trying, you're trying to get multiple picks, I have no problem taking the 203 or lower and going, man, can I get two shots here in the second round? Uh, I'm going to change it up. You know what? I'm going to go Ricky Pearsall. There's literally two players I was going to take. I'm going to go Pearsall, but there's two others that I'm like, I could literally take landing spot, could could totally flip yeah. these for me. But I'm going to yeah, go I Ricky think, Pearsall here. I I've think heard I'm too much about him from NFL people. They see him as... I, I think I'm in landing spot zone now. Like a lot of these receivers, it, it truly would depend on where they land. But a player that I've been coming around more and more on, like more and more and more and kind of fading some of the antiquated ways to evaluate receivers, it's Xavier Leggett out of South Carolina. He's coming off the board for me at 208. 209. We're just going to keep hitting them. We're going to go Roman Wilson at yeah, 209. Yeah, you got me. It's another got right me. wide receiver process. Thing. Yep, you got me right there. Thought I'd be able to grab him at the 210. You went Rome Wilson. I will take Keon Coleman out of Florida State at the 210 spot. I'm not nearly as low on, low on him after the 4640. I'm not tripping that much. So Keon Coleman off the board for me, 210. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of running backs you could go here. A lot of running backs. I do think there's more running backs that will get picked just because that's a position people usually start to need here. You know what? I think Jalen Wright's going to be one that goes in a very specific spot that people either love or people hate. Interesting. But I think they're going to see the home, the home run hitter, and they're going to prefer him over a couple of the others. So I think I would lean in him as RB4 right now. Man, I thought you were going to get me from my guy, and that's an interesting one given the conversation that you and I had about Jalen Wright a few days ago. I did not think you would do that. 
I'm going to opt for the player that I believe does have a true three-down skill set. Will he get the opportunity to be deployed this way? I have no idea. But Marshawn Lloyd out of USC, uh, he's coming off the board for me at the 212 spot. Very excited about this young man. Um, he can catch the ball in the backfield, explosive, great size, athleticism is there. Glad he's over the knee issue. So Marshawn Lloyd at the 212. Let me just run down the second round for everybody that's not watching. If you're not watching, make sure you sub to the YouTube channel. We're doing dope content over here all the damn time at DD. We got Troy Franklin off the board at 2-1, followed by Adonai Mitchell, Bo Nix, Blake Quorum, Jonathan Brooks, and Michael Penix, your top six. We had a run on receivers led by Ricky Pearsall to 2-7, Xavier Leggett to 8, Roman Wilson, and Keon Coleman, followed by a pair of running backs, Jalen Wright out of Tennessee, the speedster 4-3, and Marshawn Lloyd, the do-it-all running back out of USC Scott. Got two more rounds to get through. Quick kind of thoughts about this second round, the tier ranges, the players, the difference between, like, shit, the guys that we're about to pick in round three, I think half of those guys could be put in round two on, on a given day. So what's what are you kind of thinking about this spot that we're in right now? Yeah, for me, the second round is going to all be about running back landing spots. How many are there that people like? How many are there where they get prerequisite capital? You know, third round, early fourth round. That's what you need. If they're bad spots and guys fall, like Izzy Abanacanda last year, then you won't see the running backs get picked. I think for us, it's clearly right. going to be, did they get that decent capital, but also where did they go? What does their depth chart look like? I think the other thing that what I've noticed going through doing some of these mocks, but this one, especially I, I really, as much as I want to take receivers with those picks, right? There's I so know. many that are still left that I could tell you a story. I, I it just doesn't feel good when you have to draft that Xavier Leggett or Roman Wilson in the mid second. It feels like, man, There's can no I kick that pick for a future second and just get a, a 310 and draft a receiver that's there because I'm going to like the receivers that are there too. So it just feels like I'd rather kick those picks if all I'm hey. drafting is a shot at an ADV receiver. And some of the names that we're about to talk about in round three is just like, I, I, I we'll, we'll do a little recap of this. Let's go through round three. Let's, let's, let's get round three popping. Let's go through round three. Where, where you at? Round three. Round three, uh, polarizing, but I'll take Malachi Corley. I think he's another one that a team will have in a specific role, probably with maybe second round capital, early third. But I think he's a very, very polarizing receiver because I just think there's only a couple ways where people are going to like him. But I think he comes off the board here. I don't see a lot of difference between, honestly, him, Pearsall, Leggett, Wilson. Like they're, They all could go in spots where you're like, I'm putting those O's over the others. All right, at the 302 spot, it is tight end premium, and people like him, Tavion Sanders. I still think he's going to get day two capital. Good player. If you thought he was a 4-3 kind of runner, what the hell have you been watching the past two and a half years at Texas? He's a good tight end. I think he'll get the capital, and people uh, people still like tight ends. It's TEP, so JT Sanders, 3-2. Pure ADV pick, only because if there's any hint that this guy can do it all, training camp, mini camp reports, whatever. Someone will love Braylon Allen. Got to take him here. Can't let him fall any further. It's a good one. Good pick. Good pick. Good pick. I like it. At the 3-4 spot, oh, man, I still got to start searching now. Got to start looking just to make sure because that Braylon Allen pick did. Wasn't even thinking him. I got another one, man. And this is right off. The, and, again, it goes back to what you were saying. I really don't want to just touch these receivers right here. If he does anything, I'm just telling you what is people are going to make the comps. And he had an incredible pro day. The production profile has been there. Will Shipley running back off the board, 3-4, Clemson, taking him. He's, he's just one of those guys that if he does something and he shows some flashes of being able to catch the ball, run between the tackles, people will people be right back in on Will Shipley like they were in Devi Land before. Yeah, I was going to take Will Shipley. But you know what? I'm going to go right back to the well because there's people that still talk about this running back in the same regard. There's still people, Ray, believe it or not, that have this guy as their RB2 in the class. You got to go Bucky Irving here for the name. Mm -hmm. There's name behind Bucky Irving just like there is with Braylon Allen. So even though I'm probably like I don't know about him, someone likes him. Man, you kind of cleaned out the little running back run that we had. There was a little running back run. I think this is about a break for me as well 
Uh, I think you, you could go Audric Estime here, but I think I'm just forcing it at that point. At the 3-6 spot, we're talking 12-team lineup league. Which one of these guys I think can actually get on the field and have a sustained role? And I think he's aced the pre-draft process so far. NFL is a lot higher on him than the fantasy community. I'm taking Brendan Rice out of USC. I'm right back to wide receiver. He's got the name. He's got the size. He's physical. And he's probably, Scott, you would say probably a day two capital receiver as well. Yeah, and he's got a name. You know, there's there's something to be said about telling telling a story. That's a lot of times what we're chasing in this range, and I think that's a huge point is how can you tell a story to where this pick makes sense, not just for whether the player is going to be good or not. Because you agree, so, right? A lot of these players here, the odds they become good in a start 10 lineup league, it's low. you got to yeah. tell yourself a different story before you make these picks. Shout out to uh, Chad Parsons as it was in the chat, man. Chad Parsons, one of the uh, the OGs in the fantasy fantasy space. He has said running backs will definitely go higher than this in May. Probably, probably. probably. Doesn't take doesn't well, take much for people to buy into a running back landing spot. It doesn't take much. It does not take much. No, and I think it's also the the receiver class actually hurts itself because there's so many of them. Yes, like I can. I'm literally looking at six names right now. And the only thing going through my mind is when I pick these guys is who does the community already like more than consensus? Because I haven't a clue which one is actually going to pop or not. They all have different things going for them and different things against them. Uh, I'm going to go Tez Walker. It's a risky pick. I think he gets the highest capital of all the receivers left. But there's a little bit of worry, though. That's a guy that there's a lot of people that have hated him from the rip, and they'll never give him a shot. But I will. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. All right. Three, eight spot again, running backs, the receiver class hurts itself. There are no tight ends that I even feel confident or comfortable taking here player that I think we kind of disrespected a little bit. You're talking about the highest capital left. I think Jalen Polk could be one of the receivers that get drafted way higher than anybody believes. So here at the three, eight spot, Again, where does he land? Probably more so than who he's picked around, but Jalen Polk, like, come on, man, we're tripping. 3-8 for Jalen Polk? Like, that's, uh, hell, he could, you could you could have argued him at the back of the second round. So, Jalen Polk, 3-8. Yeah, you could have. Uh, I think you can also argue for five or six others. And I think the, the thing to stand out here is that even if he goes in the late second and someone else goes in the mid-third, that's landing spot territory. That's not draft capital territory for receivers. So it's very much going to be what type of offense, who's on the depth chart, who's the quarterback, et cetera. So I'll go Javon Baker at okay. 309. That's where we're at. All right. Uh, a lot of people out there like Javon Baker. Yeah. Some big accounts got him in their top five. I'll uh, just leave it at that. Oh, all right. 310. You're tripping, Scott. Super flex, baby. I think people want this kid to be good. People want it to happen. Spencer Rattler, again, and, and what we're hearing I do. From, the, from the NFL pundits. Uh, you have never left. For, for those of y'all that don't know, I will give you credit on this stream. You have never once left the Spencer Rattler train, even when shit got rocky. You, you and Katie Flowers are the only two people in all the fantasy land that didn't jump off of that train. You did not, my friend, but you didn't take him. I did. Spencer Rattler at the 310, I could actually argue him ahead of any of these receivers in this cluster, especially, Scott. Let's just say for the sake of this, he gets second-round capital. Somewhere in the second round, where do you think he should pencil in? Where should he appropriately pencil in in Superflex lineup leagues? Where, where, would Rattler, where should Rattler go? Second round capital. I mean, here's the thing. Would you trade a second round pick for any quarterback name, Sam Darnold, Gardner Minshew? Like he at least slots into from an NFL perspective in that range. Doesn't mean he's going to get the opportunity, but I do think it's a steal at 310. If you can accumulate backup QBs with a chance to pop, and that's the difference between Gardner Minshew and Spencer Rattler, right? Like Spencer Rattler has a chance to go up. Gardner Minshew, he's either in and he's worth what he's in, right, or he's not worth anything. So I think Rattler is actually a savvy pick for the format because there isn't any other QBs. We're probably not going to take any other QBs unless it's the very, very end. So I think you actually sniped me there. I should have gone with my boy Rattler. Ugh. All right, this is one. I'm going to just <laughs> go purely off of NFL capital here. All right, let's I go. I think this guy is to get drafted at least 
four higher than four or five guys we've already taken. And I think it's just he's a victim of not being what we thought he would be a year ago. So I think Jermaine Burton is somebody the NFL likes a lot more than some of the players we've picked. Like early third round, late second round receiver, and you're going, wow, I didn't see that one coming. Doesn't mean he's good, but I do think he'll get some capital. Interesting. Interesting. Um, You said you've heard that. So that'll be interesting to see with, with Burton. At the 312 spot, yeah, there are no more receivers, like no more, excuse me, quarterbacks that I want to take. There are a bunch of running back darts. You got a couple of tight end darts, but I think I'm right back to the receiver well. And here at the 312 spot, Scott, like the the historical hit rate of these fucking picks are so low, dude. Like I'm just taking a shot on a guy that I think could be a freak if they potentially switch a position or just get cast into a specific role. But he's clearly shown the athleticism that he can go out there and do it. So give me a shot on Johnny Wilson out of Florida State. I mean, he's a, 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 a good 6'6", widest wingspan we've ever seen for a receiver, adequate size and speed. Maybe. If he hits a dope spot to where he can use some of that athleticism in a red zone role, great. If not, I cut him. He's a clogger. I know what I got in Johnny Wilson pretty early. So that is round three. What we got? We got Malachi Corley, Jatavian Sanders, Braylon Allen, Will Shipley, Bucky Irving, and Brendan Rice. Your first six picks. Tez Walker, Jalen Polk, Javon, Javon Baker, Spencer Rattler, Jermaine Burton, and Johnny Wilson cleaning up the back of the third. Scott, just the philosophy with third and fourth round picks in general, because legitimately, I'm not even BSing you, dude. Some of these casts that we took in the middle of the third, I could flip-flop them with some of the players we took in the second, depending on how things play out. So you're just looking at this, and I'm at this year in particular, how are you playing the fourth, third, and fourth rounds where historically these aren't good bets to be good fantasy producers? Yeah, I mean, here's some data for everybody. I mean, typically you want your receivers to have any shot at becoming what I call threshold receivers. You really got to be drafted in the first two rounds. We'll maybe extend it to the first three rounds because of the strength of the class, Ray. But the average number of those receivers per class is generally around like 12 to 14. We drafted 19 receivers in the first three rounds. So the stark reality is there's probably four or five receivers that we have drafted based on where we think they're going to get picked and they're just not going to make it. Right. They're going to be they're going to be depth picks for teams and we're going to go man I really don't want that yes. fourth round early fourth yes. round Brendan Rice, you know, it's a roster clogger. So I do think the boards look different. Chad Parsons made a good point. There's going to be more running backs probably here just cuz a guy goes in the 5th round to a good spot and you're like I'm now squinting and seeing where, you know, this Isaac Garendo, I can pick him over one of these receivers because there's so many receivers. So I do think that's going to look a little more green than blue uh, in actual drafts compared to what we have mocked. But that's my takeaway, and I'll start the fourth with a running back that I think will go higher than this because I do think his capital will be first four rounds, and he's kind of got the poor man's three-down skill set, Red, that I think a lot of people are going to be rooting for. I got the Kentucky hat. I got to go Ray Oh, Davis yeah. I was waiting. I and, was waiting and, and, on it. And the process, the any running back, the, the any running back on a 53 process, I mean, this is the type of pick where you go, damn, I got him in the fourth. Do, does the, do the people realize if you get one start out of the guy, how much more valuable that is than a fourth? I mean, you can't trade a fourth for a one-week spot start running back. Yeah. So I think getting guys like that, they're going to get capital. This is where I think it's a steal I'm, to get these guys in the fourth. I'm telling you, there are a couple of running backs left that I am going to 100% walk away with. And these are cats mm-hmm. that are going to be, they're going to, they're going to get opportunity in the NFL because they just are. They've got the size that historically running backs at that size, they're just going to get carries. And I don't even want to risk you taking my guy somewhere in the middle of the fourth or the back of the, I'm not even going to, I'm not going to let you do it. And for you uh, high school pedigree zealots out there, this guy's got the high school pedigree. He's got the requisite size athleticism. Where's my boy Kendall Milton at? Where you at Kendall Milton? Come on down. Kendall Milton out of UGA four, two for me. I will draft him every single time in the fourth round running back to six foot two, You know, 220-plus pounds, the speed score is insane, can catch the ball, low mileage, SEC producer. I will have so many Kendall Milton shares, it's not even funny. If And here's the thing, as a fourth-rounder, if he stinks, 
I cut him. No big deal. If he's on a 53, sign me up for the young guy that's got the size to handle between the tackles carries. Yeah, this is one where I know Ray so well. I was thinking about where can I snipe him on Kendall Milton. But <laughs> Ray it. got so focused on making sure he got Kendall Milton that he let, since there's no ADP on Sleeper, there's no way to really filter. He let that old Audric Estime fall to me at the 403. I, I, I think that's a guy that gets real go capital. Ahead, go ahead. I saw, <laughs> okay. I saw Estime I'm there. You can, I'm yeah, thinking of this is one where I go, I'm just taking him, and I think here's the thing you did. You said that was 100% correct. I love taking running backs here. I love. I don't care about my exposure to running back when I'm at this point in the draft. Because yeah. the best part about running backs is what do I get? An immediate outcome. You're either on the depth chart or you're not. If I draft a receiver here and it's a fifth round pick, man, how do you feel about holding those AT Perrys or the Andre Yoshivases? They they didn't suck but they didn't do enough to help you. And now in year two, the best thing you got is like, you can't cut them, but they're still not in a point where you can start them. So they, that that's the it, definition of roster clock. So give me the running backs, right? And, and you, and you, me saying that I'm going to draft Kendall Milton every fourth round is not some, if he stinks, you just cut him. Like you just know if he's not on the 53, you just let him right. go and he costs you nothing. But when I'm in the fourth round, if I'm not trying to find those kind of immediate producers, Scott, I'm looking for pure ADV. And there's a player on the board that, heaven forbid, he get drafted by the San Francisco 49ers. My God, the ADV for this player who will probably do absolutely nothing in the NFL. I'm telling you, y'all, are you think I'm joking. I am only drafting because historically these bets aren't fantasy producers. I just need guys that I can flip. Who are people going to freaking lose their mind over if he gets any capital or, heaven forbid, he get drafted by the 49ers? Give me Luke McCaffrey in the fourth. Just come on down to the roster, Luke. People already like him. They're rooting for him. And if there's some world in which a fourth-round pick, Luke McCaffrey gets drafted by the Niners fourth round. Scott, how much could you flip this fourth-round Luke McCaffrey for? 25 second? More than you paid. I don't know if more it's more than second, you paid. More, more than you paid. Yes. Yes. All right. Yes. Four or five. Where you at? Uh, I'm just going either right back to the running back well or a pure hopium name that people like. I think he's probably the highest drafted receiver that hasn't gone. I think Jalen McMillan will be my pick at the 405. There's there's always gonna be a Devi person that goes, man, I thought he was the best receiver on Washington two years ago. And he's the third off the board from his own damn team. But I still think he has a chance to go right in that Jermaine Burton, Johnny Wilson range. Like, I think he, all of them are the same capital-wise, like third-round picks. I'm going receiver here at the 4-6 spot, too. And I thought you were going to get this guy because he seems to have a, a big hive out there, out there as well. But Malik Washington out of Virginia. I mean, you look at PFF grades, one of the best receivers in the country. He's probably a day-three guy. But people, people aren't as worried and concerned about size today in fantasy as they were a couple of years ago. So... I think Washington could be viewed as like a poor man Zay Flowers uh, to a degree. So Malik Washington right here, 4'6". All right, so I'm going to go pure process here. And mm -hmm. people are going to not like me about this pick, but you've seen a lot of the polls I've been posting this weekend. And people just absolutely hate these polls because they have to decide between a guy like Rondale Moore, who has a name but isn't very good, and Desmond Ritter, who's a backup QB, right? He's a bust. He's a backup QB. Nobody likes the guy. But in a lineup league, you know I'm carrying a shit ton of quarterbacks. And all it takes is one spot start, two spot starts. You could definitely get more than a fourth. So I'm purely looking at, I'm roster constructing probably a roster that carries at least 30 to 40% of backup quarterbacks. And I think there's one in this draft, Joe Milton. Oh, I can tell boy. a story, even if he's oh, bad. Boy. I can tell a story in the right spot. He gets one start. Oh, man. I can just, pick, just picture this, Ray. The Giants go into the year with Drew, Drew Locke and Daniel Jones. Okay? Mm. They draft Joe Milton in the fifth round. Oh. And week 12, he's getting a spot start. Oh. Versus the There's going to be somebody that goes, oh, Versus man. Versus the Niners. Versus the Browns. I'm excited. I'm, I'm just saying. And here's the thing. It's not that I think he's the best player on the board. 
in my lineup leagues like this, I am carrying 10 to 12 quarterbacks. I actively am trying to buy Zach Wilson, Mitch Trubisky. And when I say buy, meaning I want to pay nothing, zero. You throw them in because you think they suck. Yeah. You take the wide receiver 23 of the class over the quarterbacks. So Joe Milton, all oh. ADV, but I, th- I think he has the skill set to where there's going to be some good things that he does, and I want him in my drafts where I'm back hashing, stashing backup QBs. I'm fine with this, and I do agree that somehow, some way, people will buy into the, the supreme arm talent, and you you will have a small if not minuscule window to move your Joe Milton shares. I agree with backup quarterback, and I thought you were going to go another direction. Now this player has been kind of uh, criticized for the injury history that he has, but another one that I think could go a little higher than we we expect is Michael Pratt out of Tulane. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see him in Mobile at the Senior Bowl, but he is mobile. Uh, they had his prop time pretty high, didn't get to do anything. Apparently he's got a history of shoulder injuries, but... I think Michael Pratt is just a better quarterback than Joe Milton all around. But backup, right? If if he makes a roster and gets a Clayton Tune level start, I'm tr- I'm not keeping Michael Pratt nor Joe Joe Milton to build my my fantasy roster around. It's not happening. These are auto flips. Is the moment they get named the starter, they're not even hitting the block. They're hitting inboxes any second, packaging it up in creative ways. Yeah, but you mentioned the name where people literally would pay thirds for last year. Clayton freaking Toon. Yeah, man. Stetson Bennett. You had people drafting him going, he's going to start. There's some ugly QB depth charts. I'm literally staring at that document I made with every QB depth chart where I'm looking at all the backups. This is another one. This guy, I think, is going to get a shot. Now, let's see how he recovers, but I absolutely think you do not leave a draft without Jordan Travis. Wow. You got to draft. Going him, Jordan right? Travis. All right. Oof. All right. Going Jordan Travis. Yep. All right. Jordan Travis off of the board at 4 9. At 4 10 is tight end premium. Fool me once. Shame on you. Fool me twice. Shame on me. I'll get fooled again. But here at the 4 10 spot, give me old Theo Johnson out of Penn State. Just. Bring him on down. And if he does anything early, I'll just trade him to somebody that thinks he's the next. Sam Laporta, but Theo Johnson, come on down at the 410 spot. I'll take the most athletic tight end we've ever seen. All right, we're going to go wild card. Uh, I thought you were going to take this guy, but uh, I'm going to go with Jaheim Bell. Okay. I think he's probably the tight end that has the most ADV outside of Jatavian Sanders, just because people know the name. He's mm. small. You know, he, he did enough to where I think his name stays on the radar. We, we've taken him a couple times in our tight end premium best balls. Just a couple. You know, there's a shot that he's literally a tweener. He goes to another team that has three other tight ends, and he never sees the field. Like, that's also in the range of outcomes. Uh, but I think he's got some ADV. I hate using my last pick on a tight end because I'm usually the preacher of don't add more than two tight ends in a league like this. But I do think, depending on where he lands, he could belong here just for the name. All right. I'm going to give some. I'm gonna give a tip and some strategy. When you're down here at the very last pick or the second to last pick, Here's how I assess how I'm going to spin this pick. It's as I look through the remaining pool of rookies. If this player were on waivers and anything positive happened, him making the 53, this player being announced the backup, what's what caliber of player would fantasy gamers just unload the fab clip on? And it comes down to one thing and one thing only when you're talking about the skill position outside of quarterback and it's speed. It's the need for speed. And no matter what you think about this player's production profile, if he made a 53, that's step one. But if this player got in there and just say hypothetically his first NFL touch didn't come to week seven, but it was a 32-yard run, people would be, oh, shit. We've got the next version of Devon Achan, and he's cheap on waivers. So I'm just literally going to take, I, don't even, I can't even spell his name right, Isaac Garendo out of Louisville because out of everybody left, he's got he's the one player with a superpower left and has run real fast in a straight line. And if he gets on a 53 and gets on the field in week six, it doesn't even matter when it happens. 
He gets on the field. They activate him. He's on the 53, and he rips off some long-run fantasy gamers and be like, oh, man, I got, got to have that next Garendo. I'll give you a third for him, a second, whatever it is. So that's just when I'm using that 412, I'm not going to spend it on some receiver. There's no difference between Jacob Cowling and Jamari Thrash to me. Zero difference between Dallin Hooker and Cade Stover. Give me the one guy with the superpower, and that's Isaac Garendo. So fourth round, we had running backs dominate the top of the board. Ray Davis, Kendall Milton, Audric Estime, followed by Luke McCaffrey, Jalen McMillan, Malik Washington, a run of quarterbacks, Joe Milton, Michael Pratt, Jordan Travis, Theo Johnson and Jaheim Bell, and then Isaac Garendo off of the board at 412. This is the first super flex PPR 1.5 tight end premium live destination chill rookie mock that Scott and I have done. If you missed the beginning of the show, we're going to do a different variation of this every single week. So single quarterback, start two tight end, 2.0 tight end premium, best ball. These are all lineups right now. Scott, main takeaways, just you and I doing this exercise, which we have not done yet. What's your main takeaway for people walking away from this video, looking through this four this uh, four round mock that we've done as they you know consume the rest of it? Because ain't nothing else happening. Now the free agency's over, ain't shit happening besides rookie talk, mock drafts. Like, how should we be feeling about this class in general, Doc? Yeah, so I think the first pick, first eight picks or so, you feel real good about. Then there's a lot of high pedigree players that probably go into, where did we say that tier break was going to be? 204, 206, somewhere in that range where you feel good about having those picks for the value. After that, I think it's volume over quality, especially if you're picking right after the draft where you have to react immediately. There's no buzz. There's no hype. It's just... Throw all the ADV, all the name cachet in with the draft capital and the landing spots and go. And then the last takeaway, if you're in a lineup format like this, unless you're in the league with me or a lot of the people that roster construct like me or listen to our content, you ain't going to see Joe Milton, Jordan Travis, and Michael Pratt drafted in a ton of leagues. There's going to be running backs. I mean, I'm looking at our list, Ray. Isaiah Davis, Dylan Lobb, Frank Gore Jr., Cody Schrader. DeWan Edwards. There's a bunch of running backs that could make 53s that are going to get drafted round five, round six, round seven, UDFAs to good spots where they immediately are waiver pickups. So if you're one of those that doesn't have any picks in the third or fourth, like don't feel like you have to get in this class because you need to fill some roster construction spots. If anything, if I can sell like a 306 and just get a fourth, but also get a future third, Give me that, because I don't feel like the shot I'm taking is much different, especially if I'm just looking at, man, let me get a running back to add to my 12 that I'm rostering. Agreed. I don't care necessarily if it's Ray Davis or Isaac Garendo. They're almost kind of the same thing from how I'm constructing. So you can do more damage filling out your roster construction in this class in round four and with the waiver pickups. So I think Fab is more valuable. I think trading I out of the third – let other people have Jalen Polk, Javon Baker. You know, they're going to love somebody there. Whereas I'm like, man, do I really want the wide receiver 20 off the board? You know, like that feels like the odds are a roster clogger more so than going to help my construction. Well, so those are the ranges I'm willing to take quality or quantity over quality. Well, and to that point, Scott, that is why for me, when I am in, I'm not looking for my round four pick to end up as my RB1 on my roster, my wide receiver too. I'm mm -hmm. truly valuing these assets is which one of these guys can I pick that I can pawn off to somebody in my league? Who can I tell the easiest story, the pathway to immediate dollars? That's all I'm looking at. Which, which one of these guys can I move immediately? I don't want a bunch of Quentin Johnsons that people don't like. I just don't want those guys. I, I don't want those players that the community is lo are, are lower on, but there is no difference between Theo Johnson and Cade Stover or Dallin Hooker to me. It doesn't matter. Where do they land? Is there some opportunity for those guys? So I'm with you. I wouldn't go crazy to try to buy into third and fourth round if you have them. That's, that's nice. I'd be trying to move. If somebody's got to have that Tez Walker, that Javon Baker, hell, Bucky Irvin, send me, send me 25 seconds. I'll give it to you right now. You know, send me a 25 second. Like, I've got no problem moving off of any of those picks for those guys, but shit, if I got to make them, I'm, I'm fine with taking all the Kendall Miltons and Will Shipley's and Braylon Allen's I can get my hands on, Scott. Like, if I've got to make the picks, 
I, th I think this is a great class to replenish your running back room in fantasy. It's a great class. We didn't even talk about, like you said, Kamani Vidal and some of these other backs that have just as good a chance of ending up on a 53 as these guys. Yep, and it's such a deep class. There's a lot of good names, but the reality is we're not going to have 60 players that are relevant in a start 10. It's probably more like 10, 12, 15 at the very most. And some of those, probably two or three of those, Ray, are going to come from outside of the top 20 picks. And there's so many options. Here's the main takeaway. you got a bunch of picks in this class across your leagues. I want those picks to spend when it matters during the season, when I have the information in front of me. I'd rather have a third next year than the 310 this year. Now, I try to get more, obviously, make people pay for the bias of picking in this draft. But the worst case scenario, if you're going, man, drafting the wide receiver 20, and you have an active league that'll give you a spot start running back for a third later in the season, why am I taking a shot when there's 25 players I can pick? Why pick now when I can use that later? So remember that when you're talking about a lineup kind of moderate format like this. It's nothing extreme. Not a ton of roster spots. We're not talking like a 15-man taxi or any shit like that. It's like pretty cookie cutter. If you got an active league, you especially want to kick those picks forward because other people are going to want to make them this year because there's good players. Tomorrow morning, make sure y'all wake y'all asses up. Me and Jay Rich going through all the free agency drama. And yes, we shall talk about one, Justin Fields. And if you're late to the stream, make sure... With our new partnership with Underdog Fantasy, we are giving away a lot of stuff for our NFL draft stream right here. We've got some Travis Hunter. And, Scott, I'm not going to show every single one, but I'll just say we got a lot of stuff. What is that? We've got some Trey McBride, some Johnny Manziel, some Blake Corm, Lamar, Puka Nakua, B. John Robinson. We've got a lot of stuff to give away. Go to Underdog Fantasy. Use code DDD, triple D. We can identify you. You get not one, but two entries into the raffle. You ain't got to do nothing but deposit 10. They match you 10. Brand new partnership. Scott doing stuff with BBM4, BBM5, me doing BBM5, and a weekly pick'em show with Jay Rich. We appreciate everybody being in the building. We had over 2,600 in the total stream, over 500 on YouTube, Scott, on a Sunday night. We appreciate y'all being here. Make sure you lock into all the content that we're dropping at Destination Devi. We love y'all. Have a beautiful night. Wake y'all asses up tomorrow morning. We out. Peace.